Jennifer, who's an underhyped team? Well, guys, I'm going to say it's the Cleveland Browns, and it's probably because they were overhyped last year, and everybody said they were going to be a Super Bowl team, and then they struggled out of the blocks. But, man, when I look at this football team, they've still got the shiny toys on the outside. Their biggest issue last year was their offensive line. You go get Jack, Jack Conklin uh, in the offseason, and then you add Jedrick Wills in the draft. Grant Delpit, maybe the best safety in this draft. You pick up in the second round to go along with those young cornerbacks. So I love what the Browns look like on paper. Again, I know we don't win on paper, but this is a team that I believe is primed and ready to live up to the hype this year. So I'm going to say the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to say the Philadelphia Eagles, guys. And remember, last year, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles had to really win their last four games to get into the playoffs. So they, they won all their last four straight games, averaged almost 28 points a game. And yet everybody's talking about the Dallas Cowboys. But when you look at it, Carson Wentz last year was throwing to guys I don't even know, Greg Ward Jr. and guys like that. He has a slew of guys coming back. They have really built a a track team at the wide receiver position when you talk about Deshaun Jackson coming back. They drafted Jalen Rager out of TCU. They they got Marquise Goodwin uh, this offseason. And by the, not to mention, Alshon Jeffries is coming back. So I love what this team has, has done on offense. I think their defense is going to be even better. They, they traded for Darius Slay, you know. So this is a team that nobody is really talking about, but they won their division last year. So... Philadelphia is going to be scary. All right, I'll give you an uh, underhype team. The Arizona Cardinals, you know, the house that Kurt Warner built, okay, over there at Arizona. They only won five games last year and one tie, but that was with a rookie quarterback, Kyler Murray. And you know what? They lost five games on one possession. They took them close at Baltimore, San Francisco, Tampa, Pittsburgh, the Rams. I mean, this team is close. In fact, they scored 25 and 26 points against the Niners and went to the Super Bowl. And how about Larry Fitzgerald? I think he's going to visit every country on the planet before he retires. And they add DeAndre Hopkins along with Christian Kirk and Isabella. That's a good receiving core. They had the worst defense in the league. But you know what? Isaiah Simmons from Clemson, man, is a freak. And so this is a very, very improved team with a sophomore quarterback that will make great improvements. Don't sleep on Kurt Warner's old team, the Arizona Cardinals. Let's switch it around to the other side. The teams that we kind of need to pump the brakes on a little bit here. Uh, We've been talking about them a lot, so let's talk about them some more. Kurt, who's an overhyped team? Well, for me, I think we got to pump the brakes a little bit on the Minnesota Vikings. And I know they won a playoff game down in New Orleans last year. Has people excited. Kirk Cousins maybe getting that monkey off his back a little bit. But they lost some key pieces in the offseason. When I look at them right now, I don't think they're near the team that they were a year ago. Stephon Diggs, obviously a big-time playmaker on the outside. I know you replace it with a guy in the draft, but will a young rookie be able to meet that production? And then I look at their defense, which has really been the strong part of this team for so long. And they lost three corners. Uh, Everson Griffin is unsigned at this point in time. So a lot of playmakers and guys that they've counted on the last couple years not being there, really interested to see if this team can live up to the hype. So right now, I'm pumping my brakes on the Vikings. And I'm going to say the Indianapolis Colts, and I know they're riding high. They got Phillip Rivers, and things are looking up. But, guys, look at the division that they play in. I mean, you're playing in a division where Tennessee is coming off an ASC championship game. you got the Houston Texans, who has one of the, the, the most dynamic young quarterbacks in football. And then I have some questions about the Indianapolis Colts team. It's particularly at wide receiver, guys. I mean, we know they have T.Y. Hilton, who was hurt a lot of last year. They drafted Michael Pittman Jr. Is that enough? Do they have enough at the wide receiver position? And do they have enough at the tight end position? They lost Eric Ebron. They try to replace him with Trey Burton. I'm not so sure that they got better at the wide receiver position and the tight end position. So I think that could end up being a Achilles Hill for the Indianapolis Colts. Have we done a show ever without talking about Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Bucks? Talk about overhype, <laughs> man. I mean, you know what? And I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, too. I love this team. I love their chances, their coaching staff. Here comes Gronk, and Bruce Arians is excited. And he pretty much kept that team together. 
So you know what? You know, but let's not forget, people. All right, slow your roll just a little bit. Why? Because the New Orleans Saints in the same darn division went 13 and three last year, and Drew Brees didn't come back to watch Tom Brady win another championship. So they were, you know, the Saints were very good third in scoring. The Ad Emmanuel Sanders, Malcolm Jenkins comes back. That's a good football team. And, you know, the Atlanta Falcons in the same division, you know, they were banged up like crazy last year with Keanu Neal and Desmond Trufant and the first rounder, Chris Lynch. They didn't play much. And Gurley comes to town. And, boy, that's going to be a tough division. So let's just slow our roll just a little bit, I think, on the Tampa Bay Bucks. Play this season and see where we are, okay?